What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Saturday. It's a full slate. We're going to rock it. I know we are. We're going to go through everything. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you find this video at all helpful, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Any And the reason I say that is anytime a video gets at least 50 likes, you leave a positive comment and you are a subscriber to the channel, you have a chance to win a free week of MLB DFS content. Anytime the video gets 100 likes, we do the exact same thing. You have a chance to win a free month past MLB DFS brought to you by FantasyTeamAdvisors.com. And then when we get closer to football season, you get both. And then anytime a video gets 125 likes, we do the exact same thing. You get the rest of the MLB season absolutely free. And we're even adding on. If the video gets 150 likes, someone's going to win a year pass. Another way to win, if we get to 10,000 YouTube subscribers before the start of the NFL season, I believe it's September 8th, September 9th, one person will win a lifetime pass on the website. So definitely check it out. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com is the website. Any questions, let us know. We still have a couple passes left for the season pass. So if you go to FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, you go to FTA Plus here. Or not the season pass, the year pass. So you check it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll load. You do the yearly pass. You click Join FTA Plus. Use the promo code NFLVIP. Instant $100 off. A couple more coupon codes left, then they are gone. So definitely check that out. So we found the new way to do this uh, YouTube comment. So we're going to anyone who left a comment on yesterday's video since it got over 75 likes. You got to put it on there, filter the duplicate. You got one winner. You got to do your little math problem. And then it gets the YouTube comments. So unique comments 33. So more than 33 comments, but a couple of people had multiple comments. So we only do it once. You only need to leave one. So we're going to start, the, and the winner will be right here. It's going to raffle it off, and we will see who the winner of the free week of MLB DFS is. And congratulations to Brad Fowler. Thanks for the breakdown. Thank you for checking the video out. Congratulations, Brad. All I'm going to have you do is hit us up here on this video if you're watching. And then there's two ways to contact us, dfshelp1 at gmail.com, or you can hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team, and we'll get you set up for a week pass. Unless you're already on the site, let me know your username on the site, and then we will um, we'll get you set up for that week. So congratulations, Brad. You can win multiple times. Brad could win seven days in a row if he comes back every day and leaves a comment. So congratulations. Also, anyone who has signed up on the website and you have an active membership, check your user settings. So I believe I got everything set up for the, the Discord channel, and there's a way to get the get it connected. So anytime anyone signs up on the channel, you automatically should get access to the Discord. Um, I, and there's supposed to be something in your usernames or in your profiles. Let me know if you guys see anything. Because I can't see it on my end, so I'm very curious. So go in, sign in to fantasyteamadvisors.com and check that out. So, again, we've got a full day of games. Um, we'll look at all of them. The Unfortunately, and I know a lot of people love the way we're doing it by breaking it down, looking into DraftKings. Unfortunately, we got to break it down three different times. You've got the early only. You've got the, or you've got the very earlier or turbo is what DraftKings calls it. Then you've got the early slate here, and then you've got the main slate um, of games that start at what six oh five uh, central. So we've got all of those, um, and we're gonna break it down. We're still gonna break it down, and we're gonna check everything out. So hopefully you guys are here. If you are, congratulations. Hopefully you're having success. Love seeing the positive comments, everyone. Love seeing everyone sign up on the website. Love seeing the new subscribers. We're getting like 10 to 20 YouTube subscribers a day. It's really making me wish I didn't uh, stop doing baseball last year. I, I can't imagine where my channel would be if if I continued with that. So, uh, But let's just jump right into it. We've got the Royals at the Yankees, the first game. Brad, Brady Singer versus Garrett Cole. 
Singer, 32 plate appearances, 320 batting average. Garrett Cole, 56 plate appearances, 182. Still pitching like a stud. Um, you can look at Brady Singer here. 6-8 and eight record, 570 ERA. Those numbers would scream Yankees stack all day. But they're, they're like I said in yesterday's video, they are currently batting like the lowest uh, batting average in the last 40 games. It was like 212. Um, and they weren't even able to hit like six plus ERA guys with Colorado and the Angels. So you really never know. Um, just kind of looking at this, his game log coming off an okay game against Tampa Bay, an okay game. He went eight innings, did give up four earned runs, uh, four strikeouts. So a little bit lower, but, uh, it still had a good game. Cleveland, he got lit up, um, had a good game against the Dodgers. And then we look at his splits. Hasn't faced the Yankees this year. Um, on away games, his ERA is seven, five, four. This would scream stack the Yankees, but again, cautiously because they haven't been hitting well. But I, I won't have any exposure to Brady Singer here in the early going. Garrett Cole, obviously, he's the picture of the video in the article. He's got the, one of the best matchups of the day, if not the best matchup of the day. Pitching like a stud, 9-2 record, 278 ERA, 134 strikeouts, coming off a double-digit strikeouts here, 11 strikeouts at Colorado. And it is very weary to use this, but this is what I'm saying. They ended up losing eight to seven. Six innings, one earned run. This went into extra innings. They absolutely blew the game on Sunday. Um, shit away a great, great start out of him. I would not be surprised if he has another double digit strikeout game. Uh, home games, 291 ERA. He is better on the road, but he's still got a great ERA here. Um, striking out a ton. Gives up the home runs, obviously, it's Yankee Stadium. But I am all over Garrett Cole in this matchup here. Don't want anything to do with Singer. Um, the bats that maybe jump out to me would be, um, if you want to go very contrarian, Anthony Rizzo, just because he's been, uh, you know, really, really bad lately. Um, Oswald Peraza, if he's starting. Uh, Stanton at home, if he's starting the outfield. I love him. Franchi Cordero has back-to-back -back games with home runs. One and in Anaheim, which I sports bet, and uh, I hit that bet at like plus 650. Um, now he's at home. He hit one on Friday. So just depending on who's out there, uh, Gleyber Torres is probably one of the best hitters for the Yankees right now. You got to get him in there. Um, flip side of that, I, I don't want any Kansas City bats. I'm all in on Garrett Cole today. Next game, Rockies at the Marlins. You got Chase Anderson versus Johnny Cueto. Honestly, didn't even know Cueto was on the Miami Marlins. Uh, so that's pretty neat, I guess. Uh, 60 plate appearances, 340 batting average. Johnny Cueto, 50 plate appearances, 273 there. So the question of the day before we get into this game, show of hands, or <laughs> hands, anyone who is interested in a either a season-long fantasy football league, probably like a $100 buy-in, which we've done in the past, or if you're interested in... Um, daily fantasy, a league on FanDuel or DraftKings weekly or both. Let me know. Can you please email me dfshelp1 at gmail.com? Leave a comment here and then email me so I can get a list of names um, with with email address as well if you guys are interested because we're very excited for football to start uh, rolling around and want to get get them as much interest in a season long league. We did a season long league a couple years back. We did it like three years in a row. Hundred dollar buy in. Um, it was on Yahoo. And we had, I want to say, 12 teams like three years in a row. Uh, would love to get back to that. But if, if we'd rather do a league on DraftKings instead, we could do that as well. Might be a little bit more fun. Um, so let me know. Email me, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. So looking at Chase Anderson here. Um, should have gotten lit up against the Yankees. Uh, five innings, no earned runs, only one strikeout. He's not striking out a ton. He's not striking out any to make me want to even use him at all and then you got johnny cueto um okay so cueto pitched in april for one inning and then was he hurt yeah i i, I wouldn't use him either um three innings on his last okay so it wasn't even started just out of the bullpen um one hit allowed one strikeout i would not use him so I would not use either of those pitchers in that game. I would probably be looking at bats. And right now, I just really, um, without digging into the bats, I guess we could kind of see who's had success against Chase Anderson first. 
and I know this is controversial. Not a lot of people like BVP. We know this. Gene Segura is 5 for 18 with a double and a triple. Garrett Cooper, 4 for 9 with two doubles and a home run. Um, Luis Arise seems like he's hitting a, getting hit every single day because he basically is. Brian De La Cruz is 3 for 3. Joey Wendell is a cheaper option. Jorge Soler. I'd probably stack the Marlins more than the Colorado Rock. Well, probably both because Cueto. But Cueto is probably not going to go deep into the game. And then they're going to get in the bullpen. So you could be looking at Ryan McMahon, um, Diaz, uh, Doyle would be some of the bats that I'd look at in this one. So I'm avoiding both of these pitchers here. And then the final one here, you've got uh, Miles Mikolas versus Michael Fulmer. Mikolas, 124 plate appearances, 254 batting average, 25K percent there. And then Fulmer, 34 plate appearances, 233 17.6 K percentage. Fulmer has been a bullpen guy. So we're getting a spot start, I guess, but the weather looking here doesn't look good. Um, again, we do have a weather tab on our cheat sheet for anyone who has FTA plus. So, um, and as most of you know, we get, we try to get these videos out the night before. So weather will obviously change. So do Vegas numbers between when you watch this video and the slate. So that is definitely something to pay attention to. But Fulmer could be a cheap option because he's 4000 because he's usually a... Well, he's an opener. Um, yeah, so no, you're not using him either. He threw 15 pitches on Friday in the win. Now he's an opener, so probably do one inning. So avoid Fulmer here. Um, man, this this early slate sucks for pitching. You got Garrett Cole. And, like, that's it. Drew Smiley's going to be... Okay, so Drew Smiley's going to come in and probably uh, eat up some innings after that. So maybe you could look at him. But, yeah, there's not much specifically here with you're going to have to get creative if you're playing on DraftKings where you need two pitchers. So it's Garrett Cole for the early slate. And then choose your poison here. There's a weather concern here, which might take out Smiley. Fulmer you're not even looking at. Cueto you're not looking at. So you're looking at Mikolas. Um that's basically it. Garrett Cole and Miklas for early lineups, kind of. That stinks. I'm not gonna lie. Um, don't really like the early slate, but we will go. We'll look. We've looked at it. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, so this video is going out Friday night, and then everything I'm gonna do for anyone who's at FTA Plus, um, I'm posting everything in the morning. The lineups for the early, the afternoon, the early, and the main slates are gonna go out in the morning. I know that's not ideal. Um, but I will be out without reception most of the day. And so I won't be able to answer questions. So hopefully this video does help you. And again, th there will be stuff. So what I'll say is we do have optimal lineups on there, but mix and match. Don't just take the lineups and copy paste and then go with it. Um, take the lineups, change them around to your gut feeling, to some of your research. Also use our Vegas odds, use the bull, the ballpark ratings, Use a lot of things. Don't just copy paste. We don't just sell lineups. They are a part of it. But I say things are going to change, especially today where I've where I'll be putting the lineups out early. There's probably be some people that sit on Saturday. So that is definitely something to kind of pay attention to when you're building out your lineups. So then we got the Dodgers at the Rangers here. Bobby Miller versus Dane Dunning. Bobby Miller, I wouldn't take him. Um, Probably not taking the pitching in this. And we can we can check out why. So we get in here. You got Bobby Miller against Texas. Hasn't faced them this year. On the road, he's actually pitching 211 ERA. Um, and looking at game logs here. So the Met at New York, uh, 4.2 innings, five strikeouts. He's getting the strikeouts there. Uh, he might be a tournament option for me just because, again, it's it's a afternoon slate here. But it is Texas, and they're hitting the ball really, really well right now. Nate Lowe had a home run on Friday, um, and he's, you know, he doesn't shy away from giving up some home runs. On the road, he's given up uh, no home runs. At home, he's given up four, but I just, it's hard to want to take, feel confident about taking a pitcher against the Rangers. And then you got Dane Dunning here. Um, it's crazy that he's all the way down here because he started off the season really well. 8-2 uh, and two record, 2.82 ERA, and you can see his game logs um, outside of his first couple of starts. He was right here. He had a good stretch here, and then a really good game. It's Detroit, so that's not saying much. 
Um, but his last start came against Tampa Bay, went seven innings, two earned runs, four strikeouts, 15.6. Uh, against the Dodgers, he hasn't faced them um, this year. Looking at his home games, 284 ERA. His away games, 279. But again, this is a very, very dangerous Dodgers team. Kind of scared to kind of look at that. So um, tournament-wise, I don't mind Dane Dunning. And he's 5,700, which is kind of crazy. Let's see. Yeah, he's 6,300. This is the lowest he's been in a, a month almost. Um, so looking at that. Uh, in that game, he was 5,700 against the Yankees, went seven innings with 2K. So he has good games, and then he gets lit up in some of the games. So it's the Dodgers. It's kind of scary to use, maybe tournaments, but that's basically it here. Um, for as many games, you know, quote-unquote 30-plus pitchers on the slate if they're going to be more openers, not a ton of great matchups so far. <clears throat> Look at the Diamondbacks at the Reds. We don't have the Diamondbacks pitcher right now. And then you got Brandon Williamson. Never faced them before. Um, and this is kind of what I want to show you. MLB tab on the website, ballpark ratings. And this is really helpful. It's a free tool that we've got on the site. Um, it, it shows you the ratings of all the ballparks that are in this uh, on this slate here. So um, once it loads, we'll get through it. But I'm trying to see. So Tyler Gilbert, Tanner Tyler Gilbert is okay. So I was kind of seeing this is who supposedly is going to start. That is definitely something to look at. Um, his game logs hasn't really pitched much this year. Had uh, one here, and then the All Star break, and then he pitched an inning, and then um, then he went off on the paternity list. So. This is one where I, he's not pitching inning, so it's really hard to go off of that. Hasn't really done much all year. Um, it's in Cincinnati. I would steer clear of that, and this is why. So you look at this, um, and then you you see this, and you can click this right here, and it, it'll open it up into OneDrive, and it'll be a big sheet for you to be able to look at it. So however you want to um, sort it, you can see right here, Great American Small Park. That's why we call it that. 519 runs total in 51 games, ranked sixth, um, 148 home runs. It's second most amount of home runs in a stadium outside of Texas. Uh, that's why it's hard to want to take a pitcher in this game. And then you look at Brand, uh, Williamson here. You can see he's the second lowest. Uh, not too bad a run right here. Uh, two of those games were at home. Um, five innings, three innings, six innings. Not very many strikeouts is the problem. And Arizona can hit. We know that Arizona can hit. So probably steering clear of both of these pitchers. And I would rather take the bats there. So just looking at Gilbert, is he a righty? No, he's a lefty. Um, just depending on who it is, if I'm stacking this game, I'm looking at uh, Chris, uh, Christian Walker, Cattell Marte, Geraldo Padoma, uh, Corbin Carroll for Arizona, Lourdes Gurriel, Maybe Evan Longoria. It just really depends on the lineup that Arizona puts out. And then the flip side of that, the the Reds pit. The, we know the Reds are one of the Cinderella teams, one of the best stories of the year so far, which I'm not I, – I hope Reds go far. It would be awesome to see. Um, <clears throat> looking at the Reds' bats that I would look at um, against Gilbert, which I don't know how long he's going to be in the game, so we're looking at the bullpen. Ellie De La Cruz, he's very expensive though, and it's very hit or miss. Uh, hasn't hit a home run, uh, hasn't had a lot of fantasy points for us in a while, um, minus whatever he does on Friday. And then, you know, looking at Steer, looking at McLean, um, Jonathan India, Friedel, Fraley. I like all of. I like the Reds a lot here. So, kind of my thought. I wouldn't take the pitchers. I would take the bats in that one. Then you got the Mets at the Red Sox. You got Max Scherzer versus Paxton. So Paxton, we talked about in yesterday's video. And then, of course, during the morning time, he got shifted to this game. Um, still kind of like him just because the Mets are metting all the time this year. And then Scherzer, 70 plate appearances, 246 against Boston. Looking at this, uh, Fenway Park, though, does give up the third most amount of runs by a big margin here. Um, and then home runs, giving up 104. So they're giving up. You know, they're ranked 19th in home runs at Fenway, but they are giving up a ton of runs there. So looking at that, um, kind of weary on that. But then you look at this, and Scherzer's 9,000 where Gossman's 10,400. So we can kind of just look at Scherzer. Um, splits hasn't faced Boston this year. 
Um, away games, 492. He is worse on the road um, compared to his home games. But again, he's got five more starts on the road, um, almost double the innings, a lot of runs, 33 earned runs on the road, and only nine earned runs at home. 15 home runs on the road, too. Honestly, I did like Max Scherzer, but when you dig into his analytics just a little bit, just looking at this, I don't think I want Scherzer in this one. 9,000, I think a sneaky stack will be Boston. I think a lot of casual DFS players will see, oh, it's Max Scherzer. He's amazing. They'll see his numbers here. It's in Fenway. He pitches terribly on the road. And without seeing if there's any weather concerns, um, it might be cloudy. We could see some scattered storms, so that is definitely something where I will try to tweet out some stuff. Um, but I will be out all day, like I said. So I'll try to put as much information as I possibly can in the morning to help you guys with as many decisions as you can. And then the other day when it was Spencer Strider, we liked him. He had like 13 strikeouts. But then I saw on Reddit that someone was very upset that he couldn't hold down the opponent um, in Arizona. And I I tweeted out and I said, or tweet uh, on Reddit, I'm like, you got to look at the weather. It was 94 and humid there. The ball was going to fly out of there, regardless of what pitcher was on the mound. So this is something you need to fit, like realize. This is this sport is just like when you're looking at wind and rain for like an NFL game and kicking. If the if it is hot and humid, the ball will fly out of there regardless of who the pitcher is because if there's enough ball to barrel contact, the ball will absolutely soar. So this is something you need to watch. So if you are part of FTA Plus, definitely make sure you utilize every tool that we have on the website. Go to the uh, MLB uh, cheat sheet and check that out because it is a lot of information. And the weather tab is a fantastic tool for you guys to use. So looking at this, um, opposite side, Paxton, his splits hasn't faced the Mets. Um, better at home, less strikeouts or less home runs, a little bit less strikeouts, but he's only done four games at home. So this is a small sample size with four games at home, but this is something that I don't mind Paxton because – He's cheaper than Scherzer, and the Mets are playing some bad baseball lately. Uh, pretty much all year, though. So that's my thought in this game here. Again, if you guys are still watching, if you enjoy this content, hit that like button. If we could get 150 likes, that would be amazing on a video like this. I, it just makes me, every day I see the likes, every day I see all you guys comment and the views, it makes me feel so much better and that I made a good choice coming back after taking all of last year off after NFL uh, after the Super Bowl I stopped doing I shut the website down until July and then I got that itch to come back for NFL and then our NFL videos were not getting very many views so I do hope you guys stick around for NFL uh, we're gonna break it down I, I would love to know what you guys would like to see in NFL content I'm thinking maybe Saturday nights after my daughter and wife go to bed I could go live on YouTube and you guys could ask questions because I don't think I'll be able to do it Sunday mornings. It's just, I don't think it's going to be an option, uh, but we can definitely check and see about that. So again, um, just thank you guys so much. I, I, I truly mean it when I say you guys make everything worth it. When I see that you guys are utilizing the website, you guys are utilizing the YouTube videos and I just see your gratification. Um, it's awesome. I just wanted to say that. So, Next game, Orioles at Tampa Bay Rays. Been a great series so far. You got Grayson Rodriguez versus Shane McClanahan. Rodriguez got called back up last week and then got lit up by the Dodgers. And then McClanahan's been one of the best pitchers. He's top five for uh, Cy Young voting right now. We're looking at that. His numbers aren't bad against Baltimore, um, but both of these teams are hitting very, very well. So we look at this. Um, we see that McClanahan is second highest pitcher behind Gossman. Going up against uh, Baltimore, he's faced him one time this year. Uh, six innings, no earned runs, seven strikeouts. Did have four walks, though. Uh, ended up getting 26.7 fantasy points. Probably his best outing. Let's see, was that in Baltimore or was that at home? It was in Baltimore. Now he's pitching at home. At home, he's got a 1.89 ERA. On the road, a 3.15. Looking at his game logs, we see 19.7. And then against Seattle, 
uh, didn't do too well, but he was hurt. He got injured. Um, so he did have a couple games where he didn't pitch very well. Came back uh, off the IL, went six innings in that game against Te- – that was Texas. Only gave up two earned runs against Texas and st- six strikeouts. I kind of like McLean Ann here. Um, I know Baltimore hits the ball really well, so I could see it going both ways. I could see him having a really good game, um, or I could see Baltimore hitting – the crap out of the ball because they do have a lot of righties and switch hitters so probably tournament only i think this main or this little slate would be tournament games for me here um if i were playing i don't think i'm going to be playing i i really like to only play early or the main slate don't think i'll be playing this but i wanted to give you guys a breakdown as well so not using grayson if you look at grayson rodriguez pitch 526 three innings eight earned runs against texas got sent down Came back up last week, five innings, seven hits, four earned runs, four strikeouts, 5.9 fantasy points. Averaging 9.7, has got a 7.33 ERA. I'm I'm not in on that. I would definitely be stacking, uh, definitely be stacking Tampa Bay if we're looking at that. Hasn't seen very many, um, so we can look. A Rosarena is probably there. It's going to say Jose Siri. Probably looking at that. Yandy Diaz, I don't mind. He's still on my list though because I had a home run. I had a uh, uh, a parlay with two plus bags, and I had like four people, and he was the only one that couldn't do it. And he had like five at bats that game. Uh, Wander, I don't mind. Uh, Paredes, I don't mind. Margot, I mean, there's a lot of option for Tampa Bay, so definitely stacking Tampa Bay against Grayson Rodriguez, and I will use Shane McClanahan at home. Next game, Blue Jays at the Mariners. you got Kevin Gossman versus Logan Gilbert. Gossman's the most expensive on this slate here. And then Gilbert, uh, it's the Blue Jays. It's it's very, we don't know what we're going to get here. So we look at Gossman on the road in Seattle. He's faced him one time this year, seven innings in that game, 13 strikeouts, 37.6 fantasy points. I believe that's probably his best outing. Let's see if it were, was it at home or was it, it was in Seattle. No, it was at home. Um his splits at home, 2 258 on the road, 352. But the way Seattle's been hitting lately, I, I'm all in on Gossman. Had, uh, but be weary, he is a little bit worse on the road. Um, one more game as well, um, and has less strikeouts for whatever reason. Uh, I guess the crowd, I don't know. Only literally three innings less, and he's got almost 20 less strikeouts on the road. So this that is something to definitely pay attention to. Um, when you're building because he is so expensive so i do like gossman but use those numbers how you want um gilbert on the other hand hasn't faced toronto this year home games 421 era so he is worse at home away games 326 looking at his game log 16.5 against minnesota had a really good game against houston Um, san francisco had a really good game Not so much against Washington. At Baltimore had a good game. So he's been very up and down. Um, But he's, I like him better than Scherzer. Um, I love him better than, obviously, Rodriguez, Williamson, Tyler Gilbert. Um, He is 9,300, though, so he is kind of expensive. Um, So Vegas, I wouldn't be surprised if Vegas over-under is like six and a half or seven runs in this game. So I don't mind Gilbert here. Uh, A little bit cheaper option if you're going to pair him with, like, Paxton, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'd use Gilbert, Williamson, Dunning maybe for tournaments. I'm not using Rodriguez. I'm not using Miller. Um, I'm using Paxton. Probably not Scherzer. Probably Paxton, Gilbert, McClanahan, and Gossman are the ones that I'd look at in this game. Uh, or in this little slate here. Padres at the Tigers. Uh, to be announced versus Matt Manning. Um, Manning, six plate appearances, that's it. Uh, so looking at this, we're done with these games. We're on to the main slate. So let's see who, if the Padres have chosen any. They have not. They have not. Is this game not even on here? Padre. Oh, it's not. So this one you, you can't even play on DraftKings. So we're not even going to look at this one. We'll, we'll just drop it down um, and we'll go to the main slate. So the main slate starts with the Giants at the Nationals. You've got Logan Webb versus Josiah Gray. You've got 58 plate appearances out of Webb, a 357 batting average, 20.7K percentage. And then Josiah Gray, 41 plate appearances, 222 batting average there. Logan Webb is at the top, the most expensive on the main slate against Washington. 
Looking at his splits, he's faced them one time this year, went seven innings, one earned run, seven strikeouts, 25.8 fantasy points, which is more than his fantasy points per game. So looking at that, I wanted to see where the game was at. So it was at home, and now he's on the road. In that game, you can see his home splits, 202. His away splits, 408. Use that however you want to use that. He's got almost double the amount of earned runs on the road, more home runs, more walks, the exact same amount of strikeouts. So he might strike out a ton here. Let's see, just like his game logs. Might strike out 7, 10, 11 there, but then he's been giving up runs as well. So he had five strikeouts against Toronto, but gave up five earned runs. So for his price, on paper, he should have a good matchup, but I, I might be fading Logan Webb in this one. And then Josiah Gray, on the other hand, looking at his numbers, game log, nothing there. That's bad. Uh, five innings, point. he went five innings and had .1 fantasy points. 9.5, and then he had a good game against Philly, good game against San Diego. You look at your splits against San Francisco this year, one game, seven innings, two earned runs, only three strikeouts, 16.4 is not too bad, which is his average on the road. At home, though, he's batting five, or he's giving up 520 ERA. Um, this, these numbers are weird. Um, probably not. I Honestly, I think you could stack both sides of this ball. Um, I don't think I want Webb, and I don't think I want uh, Josiah Gray at all in this matchup. I think I'd rather look at bats. And we'll wait for the Vegas numbers to come out to build that through, but that's kind of where I'm at. Then you got Phillies at the Guardians. you got Zach Wheeler versus Tanner Bibby. Wheeler, 41 plate appearances, 256 batting average against Bibby, who's never faced them before. Um, looking at Wheeler, he's the second highest pitcher on the slate. Splits-wise, he hasn't faced Cleveland this year yet. Um home 403 away 406 so his 404 average it really doesn't matter if he's home or away basically about the same close to the same strikeouts close to the same uh, earned runs less home runs on the road um a little bit more runs i mean everything across the board basically the same number so it doesn't matter if he's home or away he's got a good matchup against cleveland and he's had success against them in the past so i don't mind wheeler um, kind of like him, his price here, 9800 I I probably would take him over Webb in this one, just due to the numbers and everything like that. Just looking at the weather, yeah, nothing showing right now weather-wise. So Tanner Bibby, on the other hand, against Philly, hasn't faced him this year. Um, his numbers, seven games on the road, seven games at home. Uh, is better at home, considerably better at home. Um, less earned runs, less home runs less hits allowed and more innings pitched. So honestly, I think Bibby could be a sneaky option. I think Tanner Bibby here might go under owned, got a better ERA than Wheeler and might be sneaky. So this is why I like digging into the numbers and analytics a little bit more because again, you guys could go do like just read some numbers and if it's not good, you might not know. If you don't dig into the numbers, that's why MLB DFS is just kind of where we're looking at for some good stuff so hopefully you guys have enjoyed the breakdowns and how they've transformed you guys have honestly helped me become a better uh, presenter and kind of showing you different ways to go about looking at different pitches different people splits just so much stuff so that's kind of my thought there i'm probably um have some wheeler but i'll have some bibby as well then you got the White Sox at the Twins. Dylan Cease for Sonny Gray. Dylan Cease's name has been floated out there for a possible uh, getting traded. Looking at that, this is something I'd look at because this might be his last start before getting traded. You never know. We are getting into the trade deadlines the end of the month, and you, you might see people uh, be – you might see people – get traded earlier and mess up your lineups on minnesota side sunny gray has had success outside of pitching for the yankees any team he's been on uh against the white sox 139 plate appearances 258 batting average 17.3 k percentage there so looking at cease here coming down here at 8600 against minnesota 
probably has faced them. Yeah, he's faced them twice this year. Uh, Ten innings total. Uh, five earned runs, though. Twelve strikeouts in those games. So looking at his game logs. Trying to see Minnesota here. At home, five innings. Four earned runs in that game. And then at Minnesota, five innings. One earned run in that game. So, really just depends. Um has had better success against Minnesota in Minnesota, if you want to use it that way. Looking at his splits, uh, 10 games at home, 10 a road. Uh, his ERA is actually kind of high, considering he was really, really good last year. 4-3 record, 418 ERA. A um, little bit worse on the road, 4.33 on the road, but not too much of a difference that would make me feel going against him. Um, a cheaper option than Wheeler, Gray, uh, Wheeler, Webb, and Gray, and even Javier. Uh, so I don't mind that. Then you look at Sonny Gray. Looking at his splits, faced the White Sox one time this year. Five innings pitched, no earned runs, five strikeouts, 22.3 fantasy points. Uh, home games, three ERA. On the road, 3.35. So he is better at home. Um, basically the same number of earned runs. Doesn't Isn't really giving up home runs at all. Um, does have 20 more strikeouts at home. Less walks, more innings pitched, more hits allowed one more earned run like i said so i don't mind sunny gray here at all um again though white Sox they're very streaky as a team as well so when they're hitting they're really hitting they're really hitting on so caution but i would i would take both of these pitchers i think sunny gray is more of your cash option i think dylan sees more of your tournament option though braves at the brewers to be announced versus adrian hauser i wouldn't use adrian hauser see if the braves have shown who's pitching here Winnings. Okay, so was never pitched before. Uh, AAA putting up 281 ERA, uh, 102 innings, 18 appearances, 13 of them starts. Um, so he's probably filling in for Max Freed currently. Obviously hasn't pitched yet. He's 6,000. He's a cheaper option, but he's on the road. And we don't have his numbers. He's never faced him before. So, like I said, if you guys have been here before, you know that if a pitcher hasn't faced a team before, I usually like to take a little flyer on them. And he's 6000 So, basically using him over the other guys down here, you could pay up however you want. Um, so, I'll have a little bit of winnings. Winnings. I really don't know how to say his name. If you guys are an Atlanta fan and you know, let me know how you say his name. Don't think he's on... But yeah, so he is he's got a great matchup. Uh probably his only start. Take advantage of it. He is facing a Brewers offense that ranks last in the NL with a 687 OPS. So fantastic numbers there. The problem is it's on the road. That's the only downfall for him. I would look at Winans here. A very cheap option. I'm not looking at Hauser. I would definitely look at Braves bats against him. A Matt Olson, Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley. Uh, the usual sub suspects, uh, Michael Harris, the second, um, Acuna, obviously. So yeah, that Darno or Sean Murphy, depending on who's out there, um, would be definitely looking at that. So avoiding Adrian Hauser, we'll be looking at Winans. We'll be looking at the Braves stack. Astros at the Athletics you got Christian Javier versus Paul Blackburn. Javier against them, fifty-two plate appearances, two fifty batting average. Looking at his numbers. Um, Trying to see if he's faced him. So faced him one time this year. Five innings, one earned run, was a home run. Only three strikeouts. Uh, his He is worse on the road. But again, this is against Oakland. And this is in Oakland. Which, these numbers don't look good. But I'm definitely looking at him. So see if he faced in Oakland or at home. Was it Oakland in that game? 10-1 to win, five innings. So yeah. I mean, this was in Oakland, really good game. Just the strikeouts weren't there. So hopefully he gets some more strikeouts. Um, he's getting a little bit more, and then there's a couple of games where he only got like one strikeout. So Javier's actually regressed from what we've looked at. He's got a 7-1 record, but a 439 ERA. So he's getting the wins, but he's giving up runs, but he's got a really great offense behind him. Could turn it around in this game at Oakland. Like him a lot there. And then Paul Blackburn, 45 plate appearances, 244 batting average against him looking at paul blackburn he's 5500 hasn't faced houston this year uh, home games 526 era road games 582 uh that's not good <laughs> point two here 
in 5.2 innings. Then he went one inning against Boston, gave up two earned runs, negative 2.2. 4.7, had a good game against the Yankees because everyone lately has had a good game against the Yankees. And then very, very hit or miss. Uh, would not use Blackburn. I would definitely be looking to stack the Astros for sure in this game. Then you got the Pirates at the Angels as the last game on the slate. Osvaldo Bito, Bito versus Reed Detmers. Bito's never faced them before. And then Detmers, 14 plate appearances, 357 batting average against him. So looking at his numbers, splits, hasn't faced him, obviously. Away games, 3 ERA is better on the road. 750 ERA at home. Then Detmers here. Splits, hasn't faced Pittsburgh. Home games, 363. 571 on the road. Earned runs are about the same. Home runs are about the same. Walks are a little bit different. A lot more strikeouts at home. Reed Detmers could, I mean, he's cheap too. 7,500. Just think what the lineup you could make if you put like Winans in here and Detmers. And then you can average 4,500 at each position. So, I mean, just depending on what you want to do, you could pay up for Sean Murphy. Um, and you go through here. You could do Otani. Then you're still averaging 4,000. You go second base. And again, I'm not, this isn't a lineup I'd be making. I'm just saying, showing you what you could be doing if you pay down at some of these pitchers. And then, um, really just depends. Like we said, Albies here. You go third base. You know, 3,500 is what you're looking at. You got to bring it down here just to see what we've got going on. Mustakis against Beto. Uh, shortstop really depends and just so on and so forth down the list. So you can really build a pretty good lineup and this isn't a stack, but I would definitely be stacking like a five and two. If you can afford it with these two pitchers, you could afford a lot there. So there you go. Everyone, hopefully I know it's a longer video. Hopefully let me know how anyone who's still watching the video, let me know how much of the video you actually watch. Do you watch the whole thing? Do you only you do fast forward? What do you do? Um, it does really help the longer you watch the videos. The, the watch time uh, helps us with the algorithm, the likes, the comments. Um, if you click on the ads, that definitely helps us as well. So would absolutely love to hear some feedback from you guys and what you guys are looking for uh, content-wise when it comes to football, DFS season long moving forward. So really excited for DFS. Um, and football because each week we'll do rankings that usually come out on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Um, and that's just a living document all week. I'm very excited for football. So that is all I've gotten this. Again, all of the information will be out pretty early in the day because I will have no reception. And then hopefully you guys found this video helpful. You like it. You like me because I like you. And hopefully you bring home some bacon this week. So that's really what I want to do. So love to hear some of you guys. Again, look to see if you can get in the Discord channel. If you can't, let me know. Good luck on this slate, everybody. Let's bring home some bacon. Peace.